The history of New Zealand against Italy on the rugby field dates back to 1987 when John Kerwin scored a memorable try as the All Blacks strolled to victory. Since then, there have been another eight encounters and with one exception, the 1991 World Cup, the All Blacks have always won easily. So much so that the All Blacks' average winning margin over those nine games is 51 points. So they come together again tonight here in Christchurch on a cool night as the All Blacks play their third game for 2009 after a drawn series against France. And we're just panning past uh, some of the ex-All Blacks, Fergie McCormick there, who were capped last night as the capping ceremonies continue around the country. Richie McCaw is on deck again tonight, not playing, obviously. Well, we can tell you it was foggy here in Christchurch last night. There was a heavy fog this morning, so fingers crossed that we don't get a repeat. But just at the moment, a beautiful conditions really it is uh, quite calm in fact we'll go sideline uh, very quickly to Ian Smith just to update those yeah just as the Italians make their way down this way they're going to run out onto a perfect AMI stadium grass manicured magnificently not a breath of wind and you're right about the fog there is word about it but let's hope it doesn't come to fruition here come the Italians <laughs> so the Italian side onto the field and uh, just uh, two of this uh, forward plaque uh, played against the Wallabies last week. One of those retained is Marco Bortolami, a former captain of the team. The big man tonight plays Test 76, and for many years he's been the heart of the Italian pack. Mauro Bergamasco on the flank is also in place, uh, playing Test 76, while the skipper is the experienced Sergio Perese. And much of the spotlight in the back line will be on Craig Gow playing just his third Test match, the former Kangaroo, highly rated by coach Nick Mallet, who's Struggled to find a quality pivot in his time with Italy. Another Australian-born player at fullback, Luke McLean. Also a Kiwi connection on the wing in Kane Robertson and the seven men on the bench for the Italian team tonight. So Italy are there, and now we rate the All Blacks. Murray Mexted is with me tonight. And uh, Murray, a big night for some players on debut. Others, established players, need to play well. Well, it's a huge night, Nisbo, really, for the New Zealand side. So many players that want to prove to the New Zealand public that they're up for the jersey that they're wearing. And here they come. Proud history, of course. So many young players proving themselves right now in this competition. So it's a fairly long walk down this tunnel here at AMI Stadium. And here's uh, Mills and Moliaina and the All Blacks. And changes in the pack from last week, notably in the front row where local man Wyatt Crockett makes his test debut. He's been a real presence in Super 14 and so rightly gets his big opportunity. John Arfo gets a start on the tight head. Isaac Ross replaces the injured Ali Williams. Loose forward trio stays the same. And another player on debut tonight, Lilia Masanga, standout for the Chiefs over the past two seasons. The wingers' berths have been a talking point recently. And with that in mind, Joe Rockathoko will come into the spotlight. And the reserve bench for the All Blacks. Now we go to the anthems and the Italian national anthem first. And they will be singing this in memory of former Italian international Pier Paolo Padroni, who passed away just recently.
Elizabeth Marvelly with the New Zealand National Anthem. And as I said before, the Italian National Anthem uh, being sung in tribute to uh, Pier Paolo Padroni, who represented Azuri 25 times, uh, passed away just recently, as uh, the All Blacks now head to do the haka. Yes, and the Italians sang the anthem with gusto. It's been a big discussion point this week in New Zealand. The Kiwi boys a little bit reluctant to sing their national anthem with such gusto. They prefer to, to do the business on the field. I bet there's a couple of Italians saying I'm not sure I'm wanting to be here tonight. Uh, big night too for the debutantes, Lelia Masanga and Wyatt Crockett. And of course a number of uh, players in the reserves who may well make their All Black debuts tonight as well. There is uh, Lelia Masanga. He's there on form, no doubt about that. And there's tonight's referee. We've seen him already once this season. He did the first test match between the All Blacks and France. George Clancy of Ireland. Uh, two Australians running touch uh, tonight. Assistant referees uh, James Leckie and Ian Smith. And television match official upstairs is George Ayub. So we're about to go. The tenth time the All Blacks have played Italy in a rugby international. Wyatt Crockett on debut. Big night for him. Local boy. And uh, the kickoff will be made by Craig Gow as the international match is underway. Nicely taken down by Isaac Ross. Lays it back too for Brendan Leonard. It's a bit untidy and it's been kicked through. In fact, it's been knocked on. So an untidy start. Well, it was unfortunate because it was beautifully taken by Isaac Ross. And as the All Black forwards gathered around the ball, the delivery was, was just knocked, I think, by a leg. Well, the Italians have packed a pretty good scrum in the last season or two. So here's their first opportunity to show it. Scrum fed by Taboldi. Pushing off to Mark New Zealand. And uh, the All Blacks penalised. Quickly taken by the captain, Parise. Out it goes to Gao. Turns it back on the inside to Canali. As one of the All Blacks goes reeling back near the 22 metre line. And uh, Gao again fires the wide pass out to uh, Bergamasco. Mirko Bergamasco, that is. And the All Blacks get the penalty. I'd organise that for you now. So the referee setting the standard early. Just here. I was just thinking that myself, actually. Nisbo, he's been right amongst it, hasn't he, in the first 30 seconds? One minute. Luke McAllister back in the All Black uh, starting lineup for the first time since 2007. 
and John Arfoa there as well. So a number of changes from just seven days ago in Wellington. So important to get your set play right at test match level. I'm talking receipt of kickoffs, scrums, and of course line-out ball taken cleanly. So Kevin Mialamu, first line-out throw. And uh, nicely taken, but badly delivered by uh, Kieran Reid. Leonard slipping. Ten out from the 22. And Kevin Mialamu acting half-back. Away for McAllister. Drops the little kick in. Clever. Now Nonu coming quickly. But it's been nicely read by the Italians. And fullback Luke McLean coming forward to meet it. Could have been nasty if it had bounced again. Oh, they've done well, the Italians. They gathered and they've controlled the ball. Good play. Parise, the number eight forward, turns and kicks, except uh, the rest of the team didn't know he was going to do it, and no one's chasing. And Masanga. Now, what's his kicking like? Oh, he's not going to kick. He's uh, prone to have a go, and uh, why not? <laughs> well, 15 metres from his goal line, first time he's touched the ball in the test match. That's one reason. Now, Leonard. Rokafoko's come in uh, very close and he delivers the pass uh, but the All Blacks have been well marked here, Reed again they're only 10 metres away from their own line Rokafoko again, obviously keen to get involved, spins out of the first tackle takes a bit of putting away and this is a very interesting approach here from the All Blacks, they're going to have to clear it at some stage and uh, they finally do through McAllister, it's not going to find the touchline though and Gower has lined it up. It's only on the 10 metre line. And uh, he's getting up there to put some pressure on and does so as it's been knocked down by McAllister and uh, de delivered away by Tabaldi. Now the kick through by Garcia. Here come the chasers. Muliaina is the last line of defence. He did well. He was taken out in the air. And the penalty goes against Italy it was a testing kick though by Craig Gower it was a clever kick actually and it was certainly worth a go well the All Blacks looking a bit loose I will say in the first couple of minutes of this game I'm sure their game plan is not to throw it round willy nilly near their own goal line sure if it was on move it we've seen both wingers have a go with very little support and we've seen Italy with a couple of opportunities. Mulioina outstanding in the air, but he was certainly absolutely categorically taken out while in the air. Otherwise, he would have held that ball. And the last line out was delivered poorly. Will they tighten up? Isaac Ross making the calls, calls it to himself and comes down nicely with it. Leonard goes high. Berger Masco waiting just on his own side of no, he's on uh, the All Black side of halfway delivered the pass well up to Gow who's taken by Thorne they would have clashed before in the NRL now the kick from uh, Tabaldi waiting is McAllister goes early, never got even a hand on it looks at the referee as if to say I was impeded but uh, the All Blacks have uh, possession anyway and Leonard in position McAllister again. Again, they drop that little kick in behind. Mulyaina's read it brilliantly, and he's knocked it on, though. Well, he's done it twice, and both Not times I think he on. read play beautifully. The first time the bounce was bad, was good for Italy, bad for New Zealand, and that one was on. Okay. And the mistake by Mulyaina, but it was certainly the, the right option. Are you okay? Just a little hand there from the fullback coming through, Murray. But the All Blacks playing all the rugby. But uh, at this stage, I don't think they've been in the Italian half. So whether this is part of the game plan, I'm not too sure. I think you're dead right. I think uh, the All Black coaches would like them to win it up front, especially with some new boys in the pack, and then start the, fl uh, the flighty stuff. But uh, it's interesting, and it started with Masanga. Well, yeah, you, you call it flighty stuff, and I think I called it loose. But I'm sure the All Blacks have given them a bit of license, though, Smithy. I mean, that's obvious. I don't think they want it to be implemented like they have been implementing it, or not implementing it, should I say. But it must have given them some license to have a bit of a go today. I would like to see a foundation laid, though, and a bit of structure, and then to cut loose. Touch. Most of the Italian backline have come to the near side. Get down, guys. Crouch. Touch. 
Break it up. We're not going to have a standoff here, all right? Get down when I say crouch. Well, everybody's been saying this forward pack from Italy will be competitive. They have been so far at kickoff, at scrum, and at line out. They've upset New Zealand ball. Break it up. We're going again. And this time, of course, Break they're battling to settle their own scrum. Well, this is interesting. This, we remember, of course, the All Blacks have got a 5 2 split tonight. They've got an entire front row sitting on the bench. So, this is an important uh, time for this front row. Yeah. Highly unlikely, though, to bring them on before the end of the first half. They'll get at least 40 minutes to get their platform correct here. Well, there's a, there's a victory, I guess, if the referee signalled advantage to New Zealand. Well, it's against the man on debut, Ignacio Royer. On the tight head side of the scrum, obviously he's up against Wyatt Crockett. And I think the referee passed the comment too low, Nisbo. Is that what he said? Yeah, I didn't hear that. Here's uh, McAllister driving it down. And oh, it's not out. So that's a bad mistake as Bergamasco turns and kicks, but he's, uh, it's gone in field and Thorne has lined this up. So it might work in the All Blacks' favour as he gets it away to McAllister, who made the original mistake. And uh, he's able to deliver the pass up to the man who gave it to him, Brad Thorne. And they're down to the 22. Now Leonard clears it. And it's uh, Muriaina in broken play here. And the All Blacks are looking blindside again. And uh, they do so through... Uh, Jerome Kano. Kano looking for the outside break, not able to get it. So now the Italians are more organised in defence and a wild pass thrown to no one at all uh, by Luke McAllister. And uh, that is offside play against uh, the Italians. But uh, again, a lack of communication. They look to be players uh, running dummies and McAllister fired a pass at a perceived player. Well, you've got a new combination. No, no, that's the decision. Nine and ten. And that's where the stability comes in. That's where the steering of the ship is. Of course, that's... Uh, you just, he's been out of the scene for a while, Luke McAllister. This is his, uh, obviously his first start for quite some time, Murray. This kick's very important for him. It hasn't been the best of starts, you'd have to say. A couple of uh, dropped up and unders, and, and then, of course, uh, the kick not going into touch from the, the, pen, the free kick or the penalty there. So he just needs to settle here, and a good kick from just shy of halfway would do that. And he nailed the first one when he came on last so week. Kick through, make sure you're so he will step into this with confidence. Looks pretty good. It is good. So Luke McAllister getting a bit of confidence back after a shaky start. And the All Blacks lead by 3-0. Well, Italy will feel hard done by it. They've played the majority of this first eight minutes inside All Black territory. They have had an opportunity. Sometimes they've played 80 minutes against the All Blacks and not have one. Gow's kick. Calling for this is Ross. And uh, went to deliver the pass straight away, but held on. And now it's with Mialamu, who was absolutely brilliant last week in yep. the difficult conditions. And McAllister slings it wide to Nonu. Nonu in turn slings it to Moliaina. Rocca Foco tries to get on the outside. But uh, good defence by his opposite number, Kane Robertson, the New Zealand-born player. And looking like they had a bit of rhythm there. All passes were good, running onto the ball. Rockefeller with a little bit of room, but possibly not fair to expect him to make a break from there. And I suppose hasn't Ma Nonu's distribution improved light years? Yeah, outstanding passer these days, uh, Smithy, off, off both wings. Now held in the back of this mall by the skipper, Parise. And then he plays at Stade Francais, highly rated player. He's going to deliver now to Tabaldi. Now it's Gower. Again, he goes with the high kick. They go to try and test that wing, Masunga, except it's not he who catches it. It's instead Moliaina. Masunga in a bit of space. And he shows good acceleration. Dragged in by Tani Rao Latimer. And now the All Blacks again. McAllister off to Nonu. Turns it back on the inside. Rockefoko has been involved a lot early. Nonu! And uh, through the intercept pass, but the referee had already made a call that it was forward pass but uh, 
He just didn't quite pick up on the advantage, really. I thought the pass from Norman might have been a bit early, which made made it difficult for Rocker Thoko. Well, the intercept was on. Commentator's curse. Just talking about the distribution. Big tackle by uh, Garcia on uh, Masanga. A huge tackle. Well, he was very good in midfield last week against the Wallabies. Have, have a look at the blind side here for Italy. Now Parisi fires it back to Tabeldi Gower. Back to uh, Garcia. He made four line breaks against the Wallabies last week. The number 12, Tabeldi, to Bortolami. And uh, good, solid defence by the All Blacks. The Italians having a lot of ball to play with. Gao goes again with a kick, driving it across field. Didn't have many other options available. And takes it to a set piece inside the 22. Well, Gao is providing a platform. He is steering the ship. He's running the show. So vital, this pivot roll. And stabilising a platform, positioning the team. Brings a few different options to the number 10 jersey. In the past, the Italians have always had a, a kicking first five, and that's about it, really. Not really tactical kicking either, just length, really. Kicking for the sake of it, yeah. Whereas Gao seems to know where he's putting the ball. Now Leonard puts the kick up, and uh, Robertson fields out on the right wing side, and burst through the first tackle. Good run by Kane Robertson, having his third game against the All Blacks. Now to Baldi, dropping the kick in behind. And McAllister can shadow this, and they go to, well, they can make an, a decision here, the All Blacks. They can take the scrum or the 22. And it uh, looks like they might opt for the scrum. Yes, I think Robertson's had about eight years now in Italy playing rugby. Yes, he's been there since an 18-year-old, so... Nick Mallett was telling me this morning that he just does everything right. He obviously had a good grounding in the game, started like most New Zealanders at about five years of age. Touch, pause and get. Leonard feeding a pretty good solid all black scrum, although it finished up being a little messy in the finish. Well, that's the debut of Wyatt Crockett. Huge man, 193, six foot four, and he's marking a prop who's 180. So therein lies a problem if the Italian can get underneath. Now Brendan Lever and lean it up to uh, McAllister, looking to get uh, Rocco Foco into the game again, but he's overcooked it, and it's gone into touch on the full. So they'll have to go back to this uh, line-out. Well, he confessed to being nervous on both occasions, Luke McAllister, when he came on as replacements against uh, the French. So I guess he'd be nervous as well in the starting line-up. Thrown by hooker Giraldini for the Azzurri. Forwards are going to have a drive here. They've brought a couple of players off uh, to one side. Parise has to lay it back. Now to Balde. And looks like they're uh, pretty keen to go again here. Playing the game at their pace. All Blacks will be up to this. Now they get it off to uh, Gao. Here goes the kick again. It seems to be a, a tactic, and Mulyaina, well, yes, it's dribbled over the line, and back they go to the 22. So they're not really putting it through the hands. No, they're not, but what is it? 92% of this first 14 minutes has been played inside All Black territory. McAllister's 22 restart. Ross is charging in after it. Put some real pressure on him. That's been snapped up, though, by a blindside flanker, Zani. And uh, needs some support. He's got it in the form of uh, Perugini. And the Italians perhaps have their best opportunity of the game so far. Gao wants the wraparound pass. So he didn't quite get a hold of it, but he was good enough to snap it up again. And so the momentum has uh, lost somewhat, but they still have the ball. Now to Baldi, gets it off to Gower again, fires the pass to Robertson, Gower again. Now it's with uh, open side flanker Bergamasco, and there was a knock on in there, or a forward pass. 
Well, Italy making all the play, putting the heat on. Uh, it might have been better served to just keep it going wide rather than the wraparound involving Gower. I'm not sure he was quite expecting it and he fumbled it in the end, but uh, certainly their best option was wide. They had the All Blacks uh, sort of congested over the far side. And this is Zani. Oh, a very famous rugby name in Italy. Franco Zani, the first Italian player ever to play professional rugby. I wonder if he's related. Probably a pretty common name, I'd say, Zani. Just an error there by Craig Gower. And then uh, a knock on to finish the movement. Kevin Mialamu was down. But look at Nick Mallet talking with his hands. Mind you, he's had 10 years in France and two in Italy, so he's, he's part European now. Well, interesting fellow, isn't he? Born in England. Spent much of his life in South Africa, been in France, and now he coaches Italy. Yeah. Been around a bit. And he speaks French absolutely fluently, and he's pretty handy with Italian now. I think he was a Rhodes Scholar too, wasn't he, to Oxford? Yes, I think so. And, of course, best known for coaching the Springboks to 17 consecutive Test victories. Now taken off the back by Reed for the All Blacks. Leonard now, former McAllister makes another blue, but uh, might get out of it. No, he's chased and taken by Garcia. Ball is at the back of the ruck. Masanga has gone in. Now Leonard back, back, back in position. Not well, sure. Saying, who's he going to pass to? He sees Arfar standing at first five. Yes. He <laughs> decides to do the kicking job. Reed coming in after this, and oh, nicely taken by Luke McLean, the fullback, the Aussie-born fullback. And the Italians have maintained the supremacy inside All Black territory. 93% of the game has been played inside the All Black territory. Now the kick, and that's not a good kick from Gonzalo Canali. And uh, the All Blacks have a chance to clear it away through Muliaina. Gower is drifting back after it. And Robertson's there with him too. So Robertson drops the little kick and clever kick. Not too many All Blacks back, but it's been nicely anticipated by Latimer. And uh, now the All Blacks are through their skipper, Muliaina, busting into the clear, looking to link up. Nobody within Kui of them, though. Now they get there, and it's been carried on up near the 22-metre line as Reed delivers the pass to McAllister. Quick hands to Nonu. He's well taken, and uh, Masanga gets it back. Some of these players slipping a wee bit on the surface as they're five out from the 22, and uh, it looks like Italy have got more players there. Oh, no doubt about that. In fact, there's... This is really obvious. One or two of the All Blacks uh, fringing away. Here's uh, Kano looking to charge the kick down. Muliaina, who made the original bust, hands it off to McAllister. He's got Rockefoco there with him. Decides to uh, take them on, then fires a loose pass, and it's kicked on. Now this bloke's offside, and he's going to be called. He was clearly offside. He was ahead of the bloke, uh, the Italian, who kicked the ball. And that's a little bit disappointing, because even if he'd been onside, he would have been a danger. Well, support play for the All Blacks is below their normal standard, there is no doubt. Look at Muliaina, this is a classic example. There is no one in support of Muliaina. He's looking to pass, he couldn't see anyone, he had to go himself, he's set up. The only one there was Mayalama, who's a hooker. Where was one of the loose forwards, or two of the loose forwards? When your fullback makes a break, you've got to have someone with him. That's open side flanker territory, actually. It's pretty well, basic Muliain stuff. is reading the right act here. He's not happy with a, a few aspects of this. He's come forward from his position at fullback and uh, let rip. Well, I just think they've got to get the ball and keep hold of it for a while. These guys won't be happy at all. This is a very, very poor start for this All Black side. 89% of the first quarter of this game has been played inside their territory and a lot of it inside the 22. Four man. All black line out. Oh, that's overthrown. Badly overthrown and kicked away by Tabaldi. Masanga going back. Got to be a bit careful here. There's uh, a player right on his tail and it's Zani. Here goes Masanga. He's going to have them on and he's done pretty well so far. Almost to the 22 metre line. And good ball delivered for Leonard and uh, Muliaina, the old wise head. 
in his 71st Test match, kicks it away into Italian territory, fielded by Mirko Bergamasco, and uh, he tips it back. All Blacks all standing on side. Well, Sam Carr. I thought they were on side. Uh, I agree with you because it went off an Italian hand. Didn't yeah, it? yeah. Let's have a little look at this and replay, perhaps. Here's your mark right here. Not quite sure what Kano did wrong there, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it was an Italian kick, an Italian hand. Well, let's have a look and see if it was an Italian hand. Unless it was off an all. No, it wasn't no. off an all black hand, so can't see a problem there. Unless it came off Latimer. Unless it was touched by Tani Rao Latimer and then gathered by Jerome Kano, that might have been a problem. Luke McLean with a kick of uh, around about 15 metres, just slightly on the angle. And no no problem with the breeze. Well, he's only ever kicked penalties, and uh, this one is up and short. So Muli Aina with plenty of time in, uh, inside his own 22. And a good clearance too. So yeah. the All Blacks at least are going to start inside Italian territory in this set piece. I think this might be the well, certainly the first line out inside Italian territory. I think we lost one last time round. Murray overthrown. Oh yes, yes, quite correct. So interesting to see Moliaina moving into that standoff place twice now and kicking the ball both times. Bortolami goes high. Kick by Tabaldi. Waiting is Rocafoco. Robertson waiting for him to land, but he's lost it anyway. But he regathered, I think. Yes, he did. So fired away by Reed. Now a chance out wide here for Masanga. So far being closed down as uh, Moriaina is first man there, right on the 10 metre line. Again, the Italians have got players to the loose ball, though. Not making it easy. Mialamu for Kano. Fights his way over the 10 metre line. Yeah, good effort, Kano. One of the Italian players has been left on the ground as McAllister turns and kicks. Now he's found a bit of space this time. Much better looking kick. Drifting towards the touchline. And that is a good kick. Yes, and maybe there's a message there. He'll feel a lot better now. Finding the touch, finding a, a good attacking position. Garcia is the man down and it looked like a head clash as he tried to nail Lacano from that last phase. So there'll be a man down on defence here. It is uh, the Italians' ball, though. Oh, beautifful. Yeah, they've lost it too. So Isaac Ross, I think it was. Still a man down on defence. So the All Blacks looking to turn this, and the Italians are going to be penalised here. There's an advantage being played. As uh, Garcia coming running back into position. Now here's the flat kick. Oh. Rocafoco's got plenty of time, and he should be able to get through. Struggling and makes it. Joe Rocafoco gets his first test try for a couple of seasons and opens the All Blacks scoring at AMI Stadium. Well, to be fair, it was the first opportunity the All Blacks have had in this game to score, and they took that opportunity. It was a beautiful kick by McAllister. Two or three times he hasn't nailed it, but that time it was right on the spot. And have a look at Rocafoco. He took the ball cleanly. So this one position for the All Blacks. This gave them an opportunity to compete against the layout. They did so with Ross winning against the throw. And here's the result of it. It's right on the spot. McAllister take a bow. Rocafoco. Well, he had to do some work, didn't he? He yeah. had to be strong and powerful. The drought has broken for Joe, though. He'll be mighty happy about that. And he had to fight very hard for it. The look on Muli Aina's face was the, the real story, I think. Uh, just the joy of seeing, seeing uh, Joe go over finally. Great kick from McAllister. He read the situation well. The Italians, one man down on defence. Garcia not get, getting back into the line in time. Brought the whole right-hand defence in one player. That exposed the space on the left. From the sideline, what a lovely kick from Luke McAllister. You can see the confidence ebbing back for Luke McAllister after a shaky start. He creates the try, he converts the try, and the All Blacks lead by 10 points to nil. Just see how far in field that uh, Robertson is just really, he has to come in because Garcia is not in the line. And that creates about 20 metres, 30 metres for Joe, uh, Joe Rocafoco on the left. First test try since against Romania at the World Cup in 2007 as uh, the kickoff is made again by Gower Mialamu hands it off to Toiava, haven't mentioned his name all night as he goes down towards the 22, now Leonard 
McAllister again. The Italians drifting back here in defence, fielded by McLean. Come on, Tate, Tate, and this will come down just out from the 22. Mulliaina wants it, but McLean gets there first. And so the Italians have an opportunity. All Blacks might have turned it over, though. And I think it might have been McAllister who got there first. So Leonard hands it off to Reed, fires it out to Latimer. Nonu hands it on. And uh, looking to get through, Mulliaina going away to Kano. And uh, another tackle missed. Italian starting to fall off the odd tackle here. And there's an offside call against Parise. Might have been a bit tough, actually, because I think Latimer had his hands on it. And I think he also knocked it on, didn't he? Maybe where he came from was the problem, but it seemed as though Latimer had his hands on the ball, and the skipper feels a little aggrieved. Yeah, I think the angle of uh, entry might have been the problem for the skipper, but uh, I think his timing wasn't too bad. This looked good, actually. The in-pass from Toyava was a beauty. And Kano had uh, opportunity to go inside again. Nonu was on his left shoulder. He chose to hold on to it. Yeah. I think New Zealand a little bit lucky. Yeah, I think he's entitled to stand there, isn't he? The hands yes, were on the ball. Toyava straightened up play. He had to. New Zealand looked like they were just moving it wide and their Italian defence was drifting. Tuiava had no option, he did it well. He not only straightened up, but he made the half break to give Kano some air. And those big loose forwards, they love to run and support. Luke McAllister on the angle, he certainly got the power. And that's a lovely kick again. So the penalty is converted by Luke McAllister. It's 13 points to nil after 27 minutes in the first half. Well, he's got his goal kicking boots on, Luke McAllister. Still win matches with goal kickers. So, can New Zealand secure the ball and build a platform? This time it's uh, Brad Thorne who takes it down. The name gives you the impression there's going to be a platform, doesn't it? Yep. And there is steady progress. Now Leonard back in. for McAllister. Fires it wide, Toiava. Looking to go. Muliaina straight onto Rakafoko. Plenty of play heading out onto that left wing side so far tonight. As they get up towards halfway, Leonard again. Now McAllister slings it wide. Mialamu. He'll look to straighten in midfield. And then the All Blacks can go again. Latimer standing over the ball. And he fires the pass to Afoa. And big John Afoa running straight back to the ruck area. Now Leonard. McAllister, wobbly yeah, kick, and not a good one this okay. time. Gow read it very easily. And he will drill it away. Stop McAllister moving. has plenty of time here. Okay. A rock of Foco. Counter attack, perhaps. You don't see Joe kick it very often. And they're 10 out from the 22, right in midfield with Leonard again. McAllister steps outside the 22. Gow again. Keep coming back now, keep coming back. Not many options available other than a kick. Keep coming back. And he's drifted it close to the touchline. McAllister okay, again. Okay. And it's a game of force back at the moment. And Gower has the luxury of the sideline this time. And it looks like he's uh, going to find it all right. Yes, he is. Molly Aina keen on a quick throw, but it's not on. The Italians are there in numbers. Well, New Zealand looking a bit more organised from that kickoff. Actually laying a platform, keeping possession until the game of force back started. Keep the gap. Big gap, Captain. Big gap. Under the blowtorch of it tonight, Joe Rockefoko. Just needs a bit of confidence. Getting over the try line will help. Now Nonu fires it back on the inside, but it bounced off an Italian player and knocked on. And, uh, Boy, if that had hit a shoulder or something similar, they would have been able to score there. Well, a little bit reminiscent of the try that France scored against the All Blacks, which gave them the victory, really. It was the intercept. A little bit like that, wasn't it? Yep, looking to link up there with Elia Masanga. Well, Bergamasco, he could see it was on. Good footballer, played a lot of pro rugby. Stade Francais he plays. Now Reed takes it off the back. Leonard drops the pass to McAllister. Almost an intercept and they've done it again. They're just getting in between the All Blacks and uh, disrupting those passes and uh, almost another intercept. And of course that happens. 
when it's not good go forward ball because the Italian backs are standing up where they're entitled to really so the risk is to pass it so you've really got to get good base before you can start doing that Leonard again now McAllister now Masanga, oh, beautifully read by the Italians. Garcia made uh, an outstanding tackle as uh, Leonard hands it off. Again, it's uh, an opportunity for Rocafoco. Trying to drag him down was uh, Hildenhais. As uh, Leonard showing his real pace, trying to turn it back on the inside to Ross. But the ball was knocked down. Referee says play on, though. Arfoa fires a long one to Mialamu. Now McAllister, Masanga. Both of the wingers have been looking for work, coming in field looking for it, and uh, it's not released, and it's an Italian penalty. And that was correct, the correct call too, I will say. So 10 minutes remaining in the first half, 13 points to nil. Most of the game has been played in All Black territory. Three quarters of the game, in fact, has been played in All Black territory. And that's interesting, you know, because New Zealand had, has had 62% of possession. So if you've had all the ball and you're playing inside your territory, you're not making good use of it. Either that or making too many mistakes. And I think it's a bit of both. Well, good to see Leonard break. He's dangerous around. The, someone must have called from the inside there because all of a sudden he spun and fed where he could have kept going. The Italians have called a short line out this time. And uh, it's worked well for them as uh, Tabaldi hands it off to Parisi. Now uh, Gao, oh, he gave it up to uh, Bergamasco. This is lovely stuff. And uh, away it goes to Marco Bergamasco. So the two Bergamascos uh, linking up well there. And the All Blacks penalised. And this is right out in front and inside the 22 a surefire three points surely absolutely and they deserved it too it was good quality ball off the top of the line out and they made the break have a look at that running onto the ball powerfully a little bit of depth and through the slot that's a clean line break good open side flanker support play it's good rugby and then enough pressure to get over the ball and i think it was Manonu who was penalized trying to stop the flow and you can't blame him thank you luke mclean then and uh, over at sales three points to italy so they are on the board at 13 points to three about seven and a half minutes remaining till the break yeah slightly concerning for the all blacks wasn't it uh, one of the rare opportunities that it, the italians have had a crack at them from set piece and they breeze through them quite nicely it has to be said McAllister. Oh, Isaac Ross did very well. Got his hands on it. Parisi did well, though. And the, the Italian skipper claiming possession. All Blacks trying to turn this over. And uh, there are a chance by the looks of things. Brendan Leonard, brilliant. So Masanga has to get in there and help out. Leonard buried on the bottom of the ruck. No, Nonu is going to make the pass. Goes to Latimer and Tanarau Latimer. Five metres in Italian territory. Now Nonu looking to shrug a few out of the road. Does so. Carried on by, Miel by Mielamu. And that's a good run. Good, I think strong run. That. More pick and goes, I think. Now Leonard for Muliaina. Probing. Oh, he got clean through. Looks for the inside man. Still going. 10 inside the 22. And uh, Leonard has it. McAllister inside. Muller. Oh, that's forward. And two in a row forward, I think. Both forward, yep. That passes forward. Right well, in front of the referee. <laughs> good to see a little bit of decisive action. Muller Aina to the four. He's the man, in fact, he's one of the few that's playing assertively on the ball. Just spotting a little bit of a gap, and it wasn't a great gap. And then realising the man wasn't in support. Well, yeah, that was clearly forward, and that was clearly forward too. So that means you, that means there's a lack of depth, lack of support from depth, and I think that has been apparent since the start of this game. 
You're back with straight, and then you came in on the angle. You just came in on the angle. So obviously talking there about John Arfa pushing on the angle. And uh, a welcome penalty here for the Italians. Well, they can not only relieve pressure inside their 22, but they start with a line-out. Now, the last line-out, I think I'm correct here. The last time they, no, no, two line-outs ago when they threw it, Isaac Ross got a hand to it. And that resulted in New Zealand's first try. So important to be able to win opposition ball. It gives your back line more chance to attack, of course, because the opposition backs are deep. And this time the All Blacks are going to be penalised for taking a man down in the air, presumably. Kevin Mialamu was uh, slow to anger normally. And well, he doesn't react like that, does he? So something was happening. So it must have been Kieran Reid who dragged the Italian line-out forward down before he landed. So two consecutive penalties gives you about 60 metres and still retaining possession, the Italians. Let's see how this happened. Beautifully taken, wasn't it? Keep walking on that gap. Bortolami places the ball. No, keep it. Keep it. So Reed had an arm wrapped around him and just uh, as he fell, he dragged the player down with him. Now, it's a uh, hooker. Geraldini. Oh, good drive and good ball. Although it wasn't cleared, so now it becomes stationary. They need to move it again. Not making a lot of ground around the fringes. Perise. Going to have another go, though, by the looks of things. That's the 10 metre line in all black territory. And there it is, popping back. It's uh, very untidy, though, in Bordelami. Looking to control it. Oh, they've got another penalty. So they're coming thick and fast for the men in the blue at the moment. And this will be an opportunity again for fullback Luke McLean. Well, Thorne wanting to drive over the top. Slow to seize the opportunity, I thought, New Zealand there. Okay. Needed another forward, at least. Brad Thorne holding up both hands, <laughs> surrendering almost, wasn't he? But uh, it really came, uh, all that messy stuff from the Italians, so it wasn't quality possession. It came from another line-out, as we see Stephen Donald and uh, Conrad Smith looking on. Uh, another line-out where Isaac Ross competed really well for the All Blacks and disrupted. Starts it out, brings it nicely back, but has he got the distance? Not quite. 22? Not Sweet. quite the distance. I thought that was a goal all day long. Yeah, Must be a little breeze there, Smithy, isn't it? No, none at all. I, I just don't think you got the timing right, really. So 13 points to three it remains, and we're inside two minutes from half time as McAllister unleashes. Tabaldi waits. Now Farisi. Not quite so sure with the hands that time. Gives the All Blacks a chance to get up and go low. Good driving play, but the ball should still be there on the Italian side. Well, should have been a turnover that one if you drive over the top and go drive you at Italy back 10 metres, and they still maintained it. Gower. McAllister wasn't certain about whether he'd get there on the full, so he waited for the bounce, and it was favourable. Oh, he's lost the ball behind him here, and he's got it back. Looking to link up again, just a bit indecisive as Leonard takes it in off the Rocafoco pass. Now it pops back for Muli Aina. Players in all sorts of funny positions on the field at the moment. Here goes uh, Thorne having a bit of a charge. Now Leonard for McAllister. Tanner Latimer is wide. But again, they close him down very quickly. What was he doing out there? They're just sitting ducks at the moment, the All Blacks. The Italians can tackle, that's for sure. And here's McAllister settling it down with a pretty useful sort of a kick. And Gow managed to fire it back. And oh, the touch judge put his flag up. Slowly. 
He wasn't absolutely sure. Right in front of the New Zealand bench, so I think they gave him a bit of a hurry up, actually. Craig Gower has... Now, did he get this right? Let's have a look. Oh, the toe, the big left toe. He got it right. Right underneath the eyes of the reserves. One Australian to another, eh? So, fellas called Ian Smith. Uh, Smithy, any oh, relation, mate? Perfect judgment. <laughs> Not a very common name. <laughs> right, there goes the hooter. So last chance in the first half as Mialamu throws. Ross off the top for Leonard. Now McAllister, Latimer. Masanga gets into the gap, but... Uh, the referee says there's interference out in midfield. The All Blacks have run some interference there somewhere. And uh, it's a penalty. And uh, now George Clancy wants to have a chat to someone. Now let's see if we can find it here. Oh, yeah, fair enough. I think Jerome Kano took a man out. Well, he, he used his hands, didn't he? His arms, he wrapped them around him, and that was, that, that was uh, not good. He didn't need to either, actually. So wow. that's it. They're on their way to the dressing rooms and only one try scored by the All Blacks in the first half. They've been scratchy, but uh, give some credit to the Italians. 13-3 at half time. Yes, yeah, substandard start for this game for the All Black team. Unable to set a foundation. It was all airy fairy stuff. Italy putting all the pressure on the first 20. The second 20, New Zealand came back and really finished the half 13 points three bit flattered by the score i think but they did take their opportunities joe rockathoco the only try of the match so far the all blacks at halftime lead italy 13 points to three Time at AMI Stadium in Christchurch. 13 points to three. The All Blacks going in as the hottest of hot favourites. 
But so far, just the one try scored by Joe Rocafoco, converted by Luke McAllister, who's kicked two penalties, and Luke McLean. He's had three shots for the Italians, landed just the one so far. 13 points to three, and there'll be some fairly harsh words spoken, no doubt, Murray, in this dressing room. Oh, I'm absolutely sure. It's very rare that I've seen an all-black team play that has had put as little pressure on the ball as this first half. And I think it'll all be about putting pressure on the ball, supporting the ball carrier, getting to the breakdown, because they're one step behind the normal standard. So Steve Hansen, who's in charge of the forward pack, is certainly having his say there at the moment. And uh, they just haven't provided a platform for the backs, really. Most of the game, as we'll see when the stats come, come up, most of the game has been played in the All Black Territory. Well, it's pretty interesting, and the stats do tell a story very clearly to me. When you look down the left-hand side, the All Black side, they have won the possession battle, but the territory is woeful, really, 31% in 40 minutes. Lots of breakdowns, only two turnovers to the All Blacks. This is an area that they've reigned supreme really for the last 10, 15, in fact, the last 100 years, probably, to be fair. Um, and the other issue, of course, is handling errors. And a lot of that has come because they've been passing the ball under pressure. It hasn't been quality ball. So Italy very much in this game on the stats ball. So those are the statistics. I suppose the one that really matters is 13 points to three. And uh, the crowd will be discussing what's going on and uh, how the All Blacks can come out and improve in the second half. And a lot of them will be saying, well, they need to. That is for sure. So halftime here at uh, Christchurch at AMI Stadium sees the All Blacks ahead of the Italians by 13 to 3.
Graham Henry reading the riot act to the All Blacks at half time and uh, fully deserved as well. They lead by 13 points to three, but it's been a very messy performance. And uh, you can imagine that Graham Henry is not at all happy. He's not, is he? And you don't see that very often at half time in an All Black changing room. The Italians coming here break. on the back of a couple no, of losses. Let's hear Wayne Smith. Years. You know, it's all about uh, going forward. Uh, we're going east to west instead of north to south. And we've got to get that right this half. You're playing a lot of rugby in your own half, as you say. Uh, the concern for you is, is, is having to play from that deep. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just dumb rugby, a lot of it. You know, uh, we've just got to get over the gain line. Um, we've got to get down there in. Firstly, there's some good space to kick into. Mm. So we've got to set up the platform. Then we've got to just get, out, get more direct over the gain line, get through the guts if that's what we've got to do. We've just got to get behind them. And the breakdown, uh, that, that area there, they're, they're very competitive there again. Yeah, we just got too many guys going for the ball, Smithy, instead of uh, going, taking the bodies out. You know, clear as the body movers, not ball getters, and uh, that's what we've got to get back to. I hope the next 40 goes better, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you, cheers. Thank so you. there's uh, Wayne Smith, and I guess the worry is that it needs the coaches to tell the players it's dumb rugby. I think everybody can see that. Interesting choice of words, wasn't it? Well, he said that we've just got to stop playing dumb rugby and stop going east-west, start a bit of north-south. That means a bit of go forward. Second half underway, McAllister gets it going. The Italians leading by 13 to three at half time. And looks like the All Blacks uh, have grabbed the ball early as uh, Leonard has it. 12 meters on the Italian side of halfway. Now the game wasn't played much in Italian territory in the first half, that is for sure. Back here for Latimer. And he carries the ball up and the All Blacks hunt in after him as Leonard fires it off to McAllister. He drops it off to uh, Nonu, who hasn't been able to break the line so far tonight. Leonard again. Afoa. And uh, the All Blacks making some ground as Leonard delivers again. No, oh, it's been knocked down by Ross. Pass from uh, McAllister okay, was uh, pretty awkward. And uh, back goes Muliaina to tidy up. He's got Rockafoco there, but he takes the conservative option, turns and uh, kicks away down to his opposite captain, Sergio Parise. And his kick is fielded by Muliaina. And now the Italians, they want to play the game in all black territory as well. That's uh, useful if it goes out. And oh, it does. What a kick. Lovely kick from halfback Tito Tabaldi. And they go to line up on the five metre line in all black territory. Well, it was pass under pressure. It was where it broke down. McAllister to Ross and the Italian line was up very flat and there were numbers there. The bottom line now, New Zealand pinned on its own goal line, having to drive out of there. They need to take it cleanly. Thorne drags it in. Nicely held by Leonard. Gee, that was dropping at his ankles. And he did very well, Brendan Leonard, to make the clearing kick down just out from the 22. So we're back, uh, same old, same old here. But a game being played in all black territory. Can oh, yeah, they contest this line out? Can the Italians string it together? Throwing, Throwing it by deep. Geraldini. Nicely taken down by Zani at uh, the back. Strong mauling team. Trying to move a few bodies and clear the ball. It's there for Tabaldi. Gives it off to Farisi. Nice work away. It goes to Geraldini. And the hooker takes it deep inside the 22. Looking for quick turnover ball. Now it goes to Gower. Gower looking for options. He can't find any support though. But he held on long enough. Now Tabaldi gets it wide here for uh, Canali. And uh, the Italians driving in. They're a threat here. They're only 12 metres away from the goal line. Well, they're playing with confidence now. Again, Gower standing nice and deep as he gets the pass from uh, Tabaldi. Now he fires it away for Garcia. And the All Blacks being forced to make tackles. Again, the ball is there. Now the big uh, lock forward, the South African-born uh, Heldenhuis. Back now, drop kick coming up here, and off oh, the captain. He's, he's done it before in Test Rugby, but not this time. 
And Lilia Masunga kicks it off downfield. McLean lining this up just on his own side of halfway as Masunga gets to him. And again, they thump it back into All Black uh, 22. This is on. Yeah, Muli Aina gets it wide for McAllister. Now Nonu drawing pass for Rockathoko. Now they free it up to Toei Ava. And he stays in the field of play, fires it back in, but it's behind Nonu. But a good counter-attack initiated by the skipper inside the 22. Well, he's had a great game, Muli Aina, so far. I've seen him in an unusual position, playing at standoff, sometimes up behind the ruck and wall, and he's only doing it because he's concerned that he can see something needs to be done. He's moving in there to do it. But he sparked that attack from inside his 22, and it was on, too. Geraldini throws to uh, Bortolami. Now here's uh, Parise, who tried the drop kick. The number eight, Alain Zinzan Brook. Except he missed. He missed, yeah. Now McLean. Again, uh, good kick here. He's found space. Rocco Foco. And the Italians will be hoping this doesn't make it to the goal line. And they get their wish. Rocco Foco back to Muli Aina. Not a very good chase that time, though, by the men in blue. As uh, McLean has it in space. And he keeps it uh, nice and low. And uh, they're quite happy to go to the set pieces. And they'll go again near the 22. The well, throw and doesn't work. They've been good on their own lineouts. Italy, they're obviously confident. They've won the ball towards the rear, towards the front. Come on, Bruce, give me a step. Claimed by Reed. Drops it off to Ross. Now Leonard. Good tackle by Bergamasco. Snapped up by Toiava. Away it goes to Muliaina. Right on the 22 metre line. All Blacks again having trouble getting out inside Italian territory. Leonard for McAllister. Thumping it down the middle. And finding a bit of space this time. But McLean has it well covered. And uh, their first thought, the Italians first thought. Let's drill it back inside the All Black 22. And let them make the play. So McAllister does. Now let's see what McLean does this time. I think you'll find it'll be more of the same. Force back again. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, he's made a mess of this, and he knows it. So they forced a mistake. Well, Nick Mallett relatively satisfied. Normally, in that situation, you can see smoke coming out his ears. There's a bit of smoke in this changing room, though, I think. These boys weren't happy at halftime. And justified. Milamu throws. Oh, it's overthrown. So nothing much going right. I wonder how long it'll be before they go to the bench. It's only seven minutes into this uh, second half. Mulyaina's on his own here, and he's going to try and get something going from the back. But there are, again, a lot of blue shirts there. All Blacks have it on their side. But, boy, it's confrontational. Away it goes to Nonu. Firing it wide for Kano. And he can't get away from Heldon Hayes. And Nonu snaps it up again. And that was unfortunate, actually. Nonu did the right thing, though. He got bad ball right in the centre of the field. He threw a big wide pass. It was a good pass. It moved. It moved the pressure away from the All Blacks. And it gave Kano just an outside gap, which he, which he took, bought a bit of time. And that, and that ball was quite good ball. So... There's a change. Well, the first sign, Smithy, that the All Blacks might be looking at the bench already. Yep, uh, well, certainly will fix uh, maybe a, a scrumming issue or two, and maybe that's where they want the platform to start from, right from the very front. But certainly a lot of experience in uh, this situation. They've been messy all night, the scrums. Absolutely messy all night. And uh, obviously on high, they've had enough. They want their Iron Man back out there. Well, I think, Smithy, it's more of a fact of more leadership, more seniority on the field. You know, the scrums haven't been a disaster by any means, and these guys have got to work their way in, there's no doubt about it. But I think to bring back a couple of players that are assertive and confident to lead and take weight on their own shoulders, I think that's the concept here that the All Blacks coaches will want. So it's a free kick here to the All Blacks. Might be a big moment too coming up for the Whitelock family. Well, that's one of the issues so far I see is the lack of pressure on the ball. 
All Blacks decide not to go uh, for the touchline. They bang it up the middle, and it's fielded by McLean. Got away from the first tackle of Masanga. And right on half time of the All Blacks, uh, looked as though they'd driven over the ball, but it's been nicely retained by the Italians. Now a kick by Tobaldi, but uh, McAllister's got back in very good position. Steps outside the 22. Gow waiting. And Craig Gow making a pretty good transition in the last year or two from Rugby League. Fielded by Mulione. Gets the call from Rocafoco. Again, the Italian tackling is solid. Right in the middle of the 22. Now Ma'anonu looking to find a gap and using his strength. But again, they stick to him. Well, took three out, though. Now Leonard sees a gap on the blind side and Isaac Ross charges off downfield. Oh, big tackle. That's oh, a beautiful offload, though. Wasn't Isaac it just, Ross. Yes, he got it away to Leonard. Thumping tackle by Bortolami, but Ross good enough to make the tackle. Now Mialamu slings it wide. And... Uh, Pass off to Rockefoco, man wide, Masanga, kick and chase. Now the bounce will be interesting. All Blacks looking uh, for it. It's loose, still loose, and Ooh, might, have been a try. Had to it. might have been a try for Kieran oh. Reid. This will be sorted out upstairs by George Ayu. George, can you hear me? A mad scramble for the ball. The try, yes or no? Try, yes or no. I'll get back to you. Well, Kieran Reid getting up where he should have been, too. Well, I'd, well, I'd like to see that again. Well, they give them pretty loosely that day, but I, these days, but this will be stretching it, I would think. Kane Robertson going back after that. Reed looking to, and he has to get a hand on it. Yeah, I reckon. I think Reed got it first. Yeah. What do you reckon, Smithy? Well, yes. I suppose you've got to give it. Yeah, that's the standard they've set today. Good kick here from Masanga. Good chase too, turning the Italians round so and uh, finding some space, which the All Black kicks haven't been able to do. Masanga extra pressure and Reed. He may have just, uh, he may have pulled one out here. He may have just got it. There's a couple of things I want to look right. at, George. Yeah, so he has just, to make um, contact with no problem. Take the ball Thank you. when it was on the ground, and I think he did that. Well, flash Masanga. If he's looking at this, another, he might be not going to award the try and maybe making the ruling on what's going to be the next course of action for the referee. But he can't call on what happened before the goal line. Smitty. Yeah, that's right. It's in, the, it's in the field of play, so this will be an interesting call. He can really only call or make a judgment on whether the ball was forced. That angle actually look, makes it look very good for Kieran Reid. Well, that push made outside of the in-goal area. But anyway, it didn't, what, didn't affect George. the ball, though. Yes. Here we go, let's listen. Number 14, Black, pushed the blue player out of the road yes. as he was going for the ball. Thank you. So, so it should be a penalty to blue. Thank you. Just on the goal line. Thank you very much. OK. Well, the All Blacks are going to have to no run try. back here. No try. Well, I reckon no George I have made a mistake. You win. Because you he didn't man. push the... He didn't push, push the player over here. the goal line. It's it was be before the goal line. And I don't think he's entitled to call. Although the question was asked by the referee, is it a try? Yeah. If he had said, was the ball grounded? Time off. Some then he would have narrowed it down to a decision on the grounding. Three changes for the All Blacks here. George Whitelock, a new All Black in Jersey 20. Tony Woodcock in 17 and Pretty Whipple in 21. So gone, Wyatt Crockett. Go Brendan Leonard. And uh, also for the All Blacks, uh, another one to go will be Tanara Latimer. So a big moment for George Whitelock. As he makes his uh, debut for the All Blacks tonight. So what's that, All Black 1093. There he is. Well, I bet his father's in the grandstand, and his father comes from Manawa too, a farmer from Manawa too, and I'm sure he would be down here not wanting to miss the chance of a debut. Kick made by uh, Tabaldi, again Masanga going back. So the penalty finally was against uh, Lilia Masanga. Here's uh, Muliaina from the back. Wepu in at halfback, McAllister. All Blacks again endeavouring to break the line. Here's uh, Wepu. Oh, he runs into a brick wall as well. So Reed denied his first test try. Off it goes to Rakano uh, makes the bust. He's got Rockafoco in support. Now Rockafoco tried to drop the pass off, but it was too tight. 
Touchline was right there, and uh, Tauiava had no show. Well, they're attacking the line now, New Zealand. It's good to see. McAllister running really hard at the line, just saying to the Italians, stop me, Kano doing the same. Breaking clean, good support, Rocafoco. Get your numbers right. Well, they've been brilliant right. in the midfield defence tonight, but Canale furious with himself, missing that one on Kano. Geraldini to throw. Bortolami off the top, as he has done all night. Oh, beautiful ball. Out it goes to Parisi. Now McLean. Quickly out it goes from one Bergamasco to the other. And the kick is uh, easily fielded. Not a good kick at all. And here comes Muliaina. Boy, he's he's been strong tonight. Best of the All Blacks by some way, you'd have to say. And Whitelock straight over the top of Muliaina. Good to see. Now a charge up the middle, but uh, they've got the All Blacks for obstruction. Taking a player off. You're ahead of the rock taking a player off. So a player taken out. I think he pointed at John Affa. Can you repeat, repeat the number, please? 13. 13 blue. Well, the Italians are going to go to the 13. bench as well. And uh, Matteo Pratacetti in 22 for Canale, who missed that last tackle. I think that's the, that's the penalty, you think? <laughs> really missed the tackle. Off. Well, I think the All Black selectors have certainly... Well, acted in that way. They've given the message at half time, and things weren't improved in the first five, ten minutes of the second half, so they made their changes. Kano, he's had a strong game in the middle, breaking the line, playing like a good blindside flanker. Well, despite all the endeavour, we still have the half time score with us 13 points to three. And uh, this time. The All Blacks have won one against the throw. Nicely done by Kieran Reid. Mind you, it was thrown straight at him. Now McAllister. McLean waits, goes early. All Blacks in there, and... Well, he's hit in front of the kicker, so it had nothing to do with the collision area at all. It's all about being in front of the kicker. Well, it's front running by Tuiava. See where he's standing? Yep, well, he's got it right. He was miles in front. Oh, very hard, isn't it, when you've got the TV camera straight underneath your nose. You have to act very cool and relaxed, and obviously they're not. They get paid the big bucks for that, Murray. Well, yeah, I'm sure they're not in it for that, mate. You don't sleep as well. Anyway, the kick is made. And uh, Italy are first to score in the second half. 13 points to six. And we've had 14 minutes in the second half. Well, you have to say to the Italians, congratulations. They are playing well. Eight out of the nine times the All Blacks have played Italy. Prior to this, they'd run up 50 points or more. Wepu for Toiava gets the call from Nonu. Now Wepu going to work the blind side. Woodcock fires the pass. Inside the 22 again, it's for uh, Wepu. McAllister looking to slice. Boy, the defence has been good. Handed away by Mialamu. Fielded by Toyava. Again, the defence zeroes in on him. Stabano. Now quick hands for Masanga. Inside the 22. The All Blacks starting to play more in Italian territory now as uh, McAllister. Up to uh, Muliaina, but they've shut him down as well. Call comes for uh, Ross, got up nicely and delivered the pass. Back it went as far as uh, Wepu. Still stationary ball though. Ross gets to his feet and uh, up it goes to Arfa now. Starting to make uh, some good metres. Having to be patient though. Tawiyaba almost still goes. Got support and Isaac Ross, he deserves it. And a first test try on his home ground for Isaac Ross. Put it down Isaac. <laughs> Well, it was a great pass. Tuiava, he is good at that little half break on the outside. He's got that little bit of gas. I've been waiting for him 
to show something to Iava, and he did it right then and gave this man a beautiful ball, beautiful pass. And Isaac Ross, well, he ran very in a very relaxed manner, I will say, behind the goalpost. And then put the ball down. He's making some giant strides. Uh, here's the Isaac Ross. He's uh, very big in the lineup, but he's been very active around the park again tonight. And he had his hands on the ball at, at the base of that ruck. And then he was up to get the in pass as well. So uh, some good work, good work from Toyava, of course, busting the tackle and giving that opportunity. But much better all-round rugby from the All Blacks in the terms of the phases they put together and the build-up. Well, Isaac Ross looking very much like an Ali Williams type of player, which, of course, every team needs. Tall, rangy player that can run with the ball as well as win ball in the line-out and kick-offs. So Favaro in 19 for the Italians, and uh, that's in place of Zani, the number six. Well, he missed the tackle, Zani, so immediate punishment as uh, Gao kicks off. That's twice now. And uh, taken down by the All Blacks and 17 hello. Annual, 17 annual, that's obstruction. Oh, obstruction, firing the ball incorrectly. That's pedantic. They look a bit bemused, it's fair yeah. to say, the All Blacks. But oh. they're going to be penalised and they may well end up conceding three points. Well, I think Mr Clancy was looking for that. Well, hello. Something new here. You'll see Stabino on there in 17 as well for the Italians. Fabio Stabino. Oh, good attitude. Imagine an Italian team doing this to an all-black side. Yes, well, the last time these two played, I think, was in the World Cup. And it was a dominating New Zealand right from kickoff in that game. 76-14 final score. And I think they scored in the first phase of play and they just absolutely dominated Lee. Well, it's not the same today. Wartalami won it nicely. Now the Italians looking to reorganise. Well, that's certainly one thing that they've tried at Lee. They've actually had a guard New Zealand up front. They've tried to get a bit of go forward. Scuffle off the ball here. Trying to bludgeon their way over here. They've still got 10 metres to go. They haven't made any ground yet, have they? All Blacks having to uh, relearn, of course, the rolling ball, which can no longer be dragged down. So, it looks like it's out to me. Determined by Kano as he zeroed in on the ball. That's counter-ruck so important in this situation where the ball is exposed just for a second and getting numbers over it. Italy still keeping possession. Four phases now. Just uh, going nowhere at the moment. It looks like they're going to persist. And back line twiddling their thumbs while they wait for something to happen. Now this uh, might be the time. As halfback uh, Tabaldi is standing over the ball. Now he delivers to Gao. Not a great pass. And he's forced to kick wide. And Robertson up after it, along with Muli Aina. And a knock on by the All Blacks. Time off. Six. 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 Nineteen. Oh, that doesn't look too flash. Someone having a crack at uh, Isaac Ross getting dangerously yeah. close to the eye there. Two what do you mean close? <laughs> We've got a fine, yeah. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. We've got a fine sporting game up at the now. It's a skipper too, wasn't it? The, the number eight. On yeah. the board. I don't think we'll convict him as yet, but the evidence That's is not good. Guys. Well, inexcusable. Mark is over here. The Italians would have been better served staying in, within the forwards because the pass uh, from the halfback was awful to Baldi and uh, gave Gao very few options. Well, oh, Mr. Sighting Commissioner, who's just sitting along from us, Murray, is a bit concerned before the game because he had a cartoon channel on his TV set. He might have got more enjoyment, I don't know. Uh, had to change I was it quite him. surprised, actually, to hear his quaint English accent, too. So have they flown him all the way over from England to be Sighting Commissioner here and watch the TV? Now, let's have a look here. Oh, dear. It doesn't, okay. That doesn't look flash. No, that's absolutely inexcusable. Physically imposing yourself on the opponent as part of rugby, but yeah. not gouging okay. eyes okay. He's a man. that's not part of it in my mind 
Wait for engage. Both sides. James, you keep an eye here. Please get the bind up. Yeah, we've got a new man on, Smithy. Crouch! Just looking at Nisbo as the, I was looking at that replay, actually, to be perfectly honest. I've, I think Owen Franks. Owen Franks, so uh, another big moment for a Canterbury player. They're keeping the locals happy in the stand anyway. Yes, there okay. he is, Owen Franks. So he is on debut as well. Yeah, we bring it out here. Let's just bring it out here. Well, it's a good old test match. In fact, looking at the crowd, Smithy, I can see them where, where we're sitting. They're very involved in the match. Hardly, and there's very few of them with big smiles on their faces, I will say. Because it is a good tug of war going on here between these two teams. Yes, we must mention too, uh, another instance of uh, brothers playing for the All Blacks. Ben Franks, of course, on the All Black Tour last year. As uh, Kano, who's been strong in the second half, busting out of a few tackles. Now Wepu goes wide. McAllister could open up here. Nonu. But again, they chase and they tackle. They've done it all night. And the All Black danger men haven't had much luck. Franks tries to make a diving save inside the 22. Well done by Masanga. Now it's back and uh, slipping again. And uh, just Terriers on the tackle. Well, he bought time for himself, Moliaina is good at that. New Zealand inside their 22, though. That's Lee trying Easy to counter it. Wepu forced to kick. Gets it up high and gets it across the touchline. So we are halfway through the second half. Three quarters of the game is gone. And it's a 20 points to six lead for the All Blacks. Two tries Use to nil. So, another Italian ball on attack. And they've done it again. Bortolami, 76th test match. He's been around it. He has been a dominating force. Here's Gower. Losing control of the ball, but recovering. to Baldi. Off it goes to the open side flanker, Moro Bergamasco. Well, this might be a turnover. Yes. Well, we've been waiting a long time for that one. Wepu gets it off to McAllister. Now Toiava. Now the chase is on. Moliaina leading the charge. A nice bounce should be good, but it's uh, Jura. And where is it? It's well, over the line with Moliaina, but... Give it a scrum. Sorry, it's 22. It's been... 22. 22. Oh, he's gone 22. Well, I couldn't see the ball. What about you, Smitty? Well, I, I'm wondering how it got to the goal line, whether there was uh, an Italian dragged it back that way or more, whether Molly Aina's hand got involved there because it was a long way before how it got to that point. And if, in fact, it was Molly Aina who lost it forward, it should be a scrum back. Yeah, that's right. Well, it, I thought the Italian defender had gathered it, but he hadn't, clearly didn't, in replay. Two changes for the Italians, Baraglini in 16 and also in 18, Fava. Del Fava. OK, so Kieran Reid takes it inside the 22, hands it off to Masanga. <laughs> Wepu for McAllister, probing again. Nice pass off to Nonu, hit in the tackle, lost it. Now snapped up by Robertson. And the Italians uh, are so quick to look for the touchline and uh, happy to go to the line out inside the 22 as the mistakes keep coming. Oh, good to see they're supporting New Zealand. Ella de Melmonch, well, <laughs> you'd hope that he'd get a go tonight. I mean, it was heart-wrenching for the bloke last week. Got on the field, but still hasn't had a cap. I don't think the All Black coaches are in the mood to do favours at the moment, this boat. I think you're right, Smithy. So Kevin Mialami stays there and makes a good throw. Taken down by Reed. He hands it off to Thorne. Quality ball at the back of the line at inside the 22. Brave, but they did it well. Well, that territory stat, Murray has hardly changed since half-time. Again, most of the play is in All Black territory. This is only the second drive we've seen from the All Black team all night. Ross slips it to uh, Wepu. McAllister makes the kick but easily taken by Robertson and he turns and puts pressure back on the All Blacks and oh, oh. it's in touch it's a lovely kick again well McAllister was in a difficult position there wasn't a lot of room although there was defenders waiting in depth for that kick Work in the gap. 
Big gap. Oh, head in. Big gap. I really think that kick had to be long and hard. I think you're right, Murray. I think if you're in doubt, you've got to at least turn them around, don't you? So the All Blacks backed onto their own line. Need a good throw here. And they get it. As uh, Thorne takes it, quickly hands it to Wepu. Gets it up high and into touch. Robertson thinks about a quick throw. I give it, I 16 remaining. Blacks, use it, well, use it 22. The All Blacks would be wanting to play a, a very powerful final 16, I would say. Get your numbers right. Starts here with an Italian throw. Can they contest? Next game for the All Blacks, a Tri Nations game in a few weeks against the Wallabies. So it's a, a big step up at Eden Park on July 18th. Oh, yes. Be different to this game. Now, Italians have the ball, but they're going backwards here. Favaro, but it's still on their side. Held in haste. They've worked hard, this forward pack. Still. Gow's dropped back into the pocket. He might even have a drop kick here. In fact, he is. He's going to unleash. And it's away to the right. And claimed by Muliaina. Back. Italian teams have never been afraid of the drop kick. Well, I've never had as much opportunity. 70% of the territory played inside New Zealand's half. McAllister's kick leading the charge after it goes. Uh, Wepu tips it back nicely. Reed across to Woodcock. Now here's Thorne. Oh, he went to make a kick. Not really a strong point. Not really a strong point. Shows what a good reader of the game he is, though, because that was the right thing to do. And now here's Nonu. Off it goes to Toi Ava. And the All Blacks playing a lot of rugby on the back foot. Scrambling back after loose passes. Don't go in there, not out. Rockafoco, one of the try scorers. Back for McAllister. And uh, they do go down inside the Italian territory, but you can count on the ball going back into the All Black territory here. From the boot of, of Gower. Lining this up is Ross. And uh, he has looked like a test player every inch. Oh, beautifully and done. he's still <laughs> going. Tried to get the pass off. Snapped up by uh, George Whitelock. Now Wepu away for McAllister. Oh, Nodu. there's men to burn here. Needs to get the pass off. Does so cleverly to Mialamu. Toiava. Just near the 22-metre line. And Muliaina has to go and... Now they're going to sling it wide again through Nonu. Ross, who started it all. Franks. Gets the little in pass to Nonu. He, in turn, gets it to Whitelock. And Whitelock. On debut, George Whitelock. Well, it bubbled the ball and then regathered. Scored on debut. Not many guys do that. Well done, George Whitelock. Now, the only question mark here is when Whitelock put his hand to it, did somebody else, the other player in support... Oh, what a break, though. Three players. Isaac Ross, he caught the ball and beat three players. Whitelock, Whitelock involved there, so he had to get himself off the ground, didn't he? And get back into play, so good on him. Frank's made a little bit of a break here. Check this out. Step through, good pass. Nonu, another pass. Bang, bang. Oh, I think he was all right, but actually. Reed just kept his hand out of it, and he touched it. He did everything. He, he really wanted to grab it, but I think he did the right thing, Kieran Reed. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, good refereeing. No doubt about it. That's uh, no problem there. How about Isaac Ross? Outstanding. There's some very woeful Italian defence, and I think that's what Nick Mallett's going crook about. But uh, Isaac Ross, ball in hand, ball in one hand, and then again in the move, linking up. The Callister's conversion is down the middle, so... They don't look ecstatic. 27 points to six. No, they'll be breathing a sigh of relief, though, won't they? Because flattered on the scoreboard. When I look at the, the territory, minutes in the opposition 22, the Italians have spent 13 minutes in New Zealand's 22, and New Zealand have spent four in the Italian 22. Now, that does tell a story. So, Corey Jane onto yeah, the field. Just the two... Uh back reserves of course for the All Blacks they went for a 5-2 split so Corey Jane for Lela Masanga 
Spence, but they're getting up down and tell them Ella de Melmont should be on the field shortly. Well, yeah, it'd be frustrating for the poor guy, got to say. <laughs> He's uh, broken a record for stretching. <laughs> so the kickoff is made. We've got around about 11 minutes remaining. Well, this is how they started the last one. A good drive. No one's holding that ball at the back. So McAllister moves it across. Uh, Toyava. Now Muli Aina. Just looking a little easier now. The Italians not quite as solid in the tackle. They've left the ball in the open, and it's been pounced upon. Well, I think he turned it over legitimately too. However, it's, it's one back, I think. Yeah, yes, we we won it back. Muliaina, who's played uh, increasingly in the line tonight. He's spent a lot of time in well, the front line, if you like. Well, he's had to, hasn't he? Now McAllister again delivers for Nonu. Nonu gets it back. Starting to find a lot more space now as uh, they go to the halfway line. Isaac Ross again for Wepu. Sells the dummy. Stepping. Now he finds Ross. He's everywhere at the moment. Isaac Ross. He can put a big tick beside his name tonight. And now they've lost it. And the pressure coming in. There's been uh, a knock on against the Italians. Oh, there's an early tackle. A mile early. Yep. And uh, a penalty. Number 22, tackle without the ball. Well, well, they'll either tap or they'll kick it out in the corner and try and score. I think I'll be kicking it out in the corner. They need to have some authority in the last 10 minutes of this game, New Zealand, to save a certain amount of face. I'm not talking about the scoreboard, I'm just talking about the execution. A lot of talk before the game that... Uh... They might give Brad Thorne a reasonably easy passage uh, tonight. Maybe bring him off with 70 minutes or 60 minutes gone, but he's still out there. Well, some players like a heavy load and they just play better. And I think he might be one of those players just listening to him talk about how he relishes every moment he plays in the All Black jersey. He's a great example. Sometimes you can be too easy on resting spelling players and they get out of the cut and thrust of the game. Oh, that's overthrown. Yeah, bad throw. So Gower slipping a couple of tackles. Finally, Nonu has to go back and grab him to Baldi. And uh, the All Blacks are going to be penalised here, slowing the ball down. Number 12, slowing it down. Get the hands over there. Get your hands off. Yeah, Nonu suggesting he wasn't slowing it down. And I wouldn't mind Blue seeing 12. a replay. Blue 12. I can't take my okay. eyes off the All Black bench, Smithy, and I think we're going to see some reinforcement shortly. <laughs> I think one of the reasons Demel Monch hasn't come on is because of the desire to have more senior players. Well, you can see uh, the Italians have made a change, and the change is the man about to take this penalty. In uh, 21, Christopher Burton. And he's uh, gone on for probably the most effective midfield defender in Garcia. So it looks like Gao might have moved out one. Just around eight minutes remaining. As uh, the ball flicks back against the throw again. So the All Black back line get another opportunity. Toei Arba has uh, lost it. No advantage. No advantage. Hey, it's the back. Knock on here. Scrum blue ball. No pressure at all. Working hard here now, keeping it up. Getting binds up and keeping straight. Working hard. Working hard to keep this up. No. Get the engage right. That's it. Wait. Crouch! Very easy. Touch. Pause and engage. Down the middle. Let's go. Oh, a good scrum. Yeah, not a bad scrum from the All Blacks. Parise, you oh, flicked it nicely back in field. And the ball has been just projected for a wee bit, but still there for the Italians. Bergamasco directing the troops. Right to the 22 metre line they go. Yeah, I won't be there. 
Now yeah, snapped up by uh, Perugini, the loose head prop. Hands out, get back six. To Baldi. Gets it away. Burton stabbing the kick through. That easily read by Muli Aina. Stay here, 10 and 12. Where? All right. Back to McLean. And Come again, on, the Blue. high Come kick. On. No pressure on uh, Mills Muliaina. Gets the call from Joe Rock. If they go, give it to me, he says. And away he goes. Well, smoking Joe needs to smoke. There's no doubt about it. Hello. Hello, it's been turned over. How so somehow that? the All Blacks have lost it. Robertson has it. Tried to put the kick through. Bounced off Nonu. Nonu does well. Turns the Italian player. And is it good enough to get the ball back on the All Black side? No. Now Robertson has it. And oh, he lost it. Was just getting a bit ahead of himself there. Kane Robertson. He's just Change at halfback as well for the Italians, uh, Giulio Tonialati in jersey 20. I've never seen a bloke spend so much time getting ready, Smithy. Well, well, I'll tell you what, you Scottish. would spend that time too if you were about to play your first test match in his boat. <laughs> well, he's got his guru behind him, Mike Cron. So maybe that's a good sign. A big, a big moment may not be far away. In fact, Nisbo, you would have been out there after breakfast stretching, yeah. waiting. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, well, you can't blame him. Yeah, he wants to get on that field. And I tell you what, the way he played in Super 14 rugby, he deserves to get on that Here field. Here it is, fantastic. Alan de Melmoch makes it on and will get some footy. Well, yes, and we will see some footy because this man is a very physical hooker, used to play as a loose forward abrasive player for sure so a complete change in the front row, three players who didn't start in there now as Reed hands it off to uh, Wepu he drops it to Rokothoko Tony Woodcock fights his way a couple of metres uh, downfield Wepu now, away for McAllister looking to step his way through but there are very few gaps out there and now Wepu in close, still trying to punish his way through. Reed for McAllister. Now Piri Whipu, Muliaina away for Toiava. Well, they just haven't been able to breach this defence. Whipu to McAllister. Again, running out of options, off to Rocker Foco. No hands. Well, it's trying to smash holes rather than manoeuvre. Well, it's flogging a dead horse, isn't it? As uh, Nonu tries, and he gets uh, as far as everybody else, which is nowhere. Almost to the halfway line. Very industrious, but going nowhere. So, Wepu. McAllister, a little change of tactic with no one following. Now it's been uh, snapped up here by Favaro, and uh, the Italians have quite easily stifled that all-black attack. Well, plenty of opportunity. Okay, New Zealand now, getting lots of ball, but not now. able to create any space, put players away in gaps, which is so typical of their style of play in the last few years. Have been outstanding at finding space and putting men away. That been an example, I think, to the world game. But they're short tonight. Demelmoch to throw. Four minutes remaining here. The lowest score the All Blacks have ever had against uh, the Italians was 31, which is uh, what they scored at the World Cup in 1991. And Italy got within 10 points. So, the Italians don't score very many tries, it has to be said, against the All Blacks. And they've got a rough chance here in the last few minutes to maybe get across the chalk. Maybe a drop kick, though, instead. And away it goes, and it is away to the left from uh, Christopher Burton. Once again, I look at the position that 
the game has been played and 70% of it has been inside New Zealand 22. That was very close. Well, they're happy, aren't they? They're happy in the changing room. They're down 27-6. Well, Nick Mallett said, I think he said it in Australia, we'd like a wet night to keep the scores reasonably close. Well, he didn't get a wet night, but the scores are probably as close as he's, uh, oh, he's anticipated or wanted. Now here's uh, Burton kicking again. And that's off the side of the boot. And it's been fielded by Reed in open space. Oh, he looks to be limping a bit, actually. Kieran Reed. Not sure whether he pulled a muscle there. He didn't look to be running freely. In the side. As uh, Muliaina off to Rokathoko. Kano. Oh, and no advantage. You came off your feet there. It's the a penalty. Here, well, here. the Italians' expectation of winning a game like this is not very high. In fact, I had breakfast with Nick Mallett this morning and he passed the comment that they were happy with... The Italians were happy with the deficit against Australia. Well, the New Zealand public certainly wouldn't accept that. So they would be absolutely delighted with CS. He is certainly limping, isn't he? In fact, I wondered he was well out of position when he caught that ball. So he may well be leaving the field. You know, when you look at the deficits, 31-8 in the first test against the Wallabies. What's that? 23. And then 34-12, 22. It's going to be around about the same, isn't it? Yes, it is. And then I think the... Uh, the Italians will be pleased with that, as you can see by the mood in the dressing room. Very few stoppages in this game tonight. It's basically been injury-free. The All Blacks have a reasonable possession ratio of 55%. Kano wins the line-out. Away it goes for McAllister. Stepping almost through. Got it to Rocafoco. Delayed the pass. Now Nonu. As the All Blacks look to finish with a flourish, Wepu has a go at the line. He's not quite there, though. And the All Blacks hit it with Gasto, but it wasn't released in time. And so the All Blacks, looking to finish with a try, have been denied and we're in the last minute. And that's what the Italians want. They want to hold out. Terrific defence, Murray. That was terrific defence by the Italians. Really organised. Well, I don't know about that. I think they, the, the end, line was mean? broken. Yes, the line was split In wide open. End. And really, if there'd been another supporting player with Weepu, there would have been a try. But McAllister straight through. Nice little pass. Nonu, all power. Forward drive over the top. Just not able to get that down. Ooh, I'll tell you what, that might have been down. I, I, I don't think it's over the line, though. And Craig Gowden, amazingly well. Well, he's fought in the trenches before. Ball tipped on the All Black side. One last chance as the Hooter goes. Toyava brings it under control. Looked for an inside pass. Nobody home, though. And uh, the All Blacks off been stolen away. Yeah. The hoot is gone, so I wouldn't mind betting the Italians will happily kick this out. Well, it's not out as yet, and it's drifting towards the touchline, and it does go into touch. And George Clancy blows the whistle. The Italian coaching staff are delighted. And uh, that's the contrast in the All Black coaching room. 27 points to six, a far from satisfactory performance by the All Blacks. Yes, and I think the camera has captured, captured the situation. Well, the Italian camp will be very happy. They certainly had a victory. 70% of the territory in this game. 14 minutes inside the All Black 22. They weren't able to score a try, but they won a lot of lineouts. Their scrum was adequate. They were quite good at the breakdown. They finished even, actually, in that area of the game. The All Blacks, they will be disappointed. They certainly won comfortably on the scoreboard, but they, there were very few other areas of the game where they dominated.